Once we have accepted that evolution has happened, and there really is no other explanation, then we also have to accept that our minds were also created this way and have been built up by trillions and trillions of very small evolutionary steps. Now this is really an incredible statement and we will discuss some of the implications of this in the coming lessons. But what this is saying is that the human mind is not a piece of perfect engineering designed for a purpose, but one that is evolved by chance to produce emotions, intelligent thought, language, creativity and consciousness. It has produced the soul, the you and the me. Now our understanding of the brain's evolution is not complete, but what we do know gives some incredible insight into why we think like we do. Human brains are about triple the size of our nearest cousins. Our brains have grown from the bottom up. There has been no major overhaul, but the gradual addition of new parts on top of the old. The growth of the human embryo roughly retraces these steps. The net effect is a bit of a kludge, an inelegant and inefficient agglomeration of stuff that does work surprisingly well. Some of these parts have been recycled. For instance, our cerebellums were originally movement controllers in crocodiles. And others were a solution to a problem many millions of years ago. Blind people can sense through blind sight an object's position. This ability was obviously useful before the advent of vision and it is now no longer linked to consciousness, but still remains in this kludge. We see evolution is a tinkerer, it is not an engineer. The most primitive part of the brain is the brain stem, which surrounds the top of the spinal cord and is found in all other creatures with a nervous system. This root brain stem regulates basic life functions, such as breathing, basic reactions and metabolism. This part and the midbrain does not think or learn, but is a set of pre-programs that keeps the body running and we are not at all conscious of them. The earliest mammals evolved a limbic system, producing chemically based emotional responses such as fear, craving, love and pleasure, which further evolved into learning and memory as this gave advantages, recalling the past experiences to make better decisions now. About a hundred million years ago, the mammalian brain had a major growth spurt. The ancient planning centre, which was a thin two-layer cortex, developed into a much larger neocortex. Now this is the area involved in sensory perception, spatial reasoning, motor commands, conscious thought and language. This offered an extraordinary intellectual edge, leading to many advantages when mixed with the emotional limbic system, such as pair bonding and mother-child bonding, allowing the young of the species to grow slowly with protection from the parents. Here at this time, we also see the brain developing more advanced social skills. The basic ability to flee or fight is very much a win or lose situation, but the ability to cooperate interact with group members, communicate, develop morality, protect your young and 
enjoy each other's company are all win-win situations that add incredibly powerful evolutionary advantages. This development of a neocortex also meant that some of the brain could develop in response to its environment. These larger brains could build interconnections as it needed them, as it grew from child to adult. This meant that the complex social and physical world we found ourselves in could influence how we developed our responses to it. The ultimate in adaptability. So the brain started with the basic bits needed to survive and added bits like scoops of ice cream to itself as evolution took its course. Once neurons, responsible for the rapid electrical signalling, had been evolved in jellyfish about 600 million years ago, we find they pretty much remained the same as they do today in us. They're just more specialised and there's lots more of them. Basic mechanisms for transmitting electric impulses in the brain is different concentrations of sodium and potassium in solutions inside and outside of the cells and is also a very ancient mechanism. It actually conducts electricity at less than one millionth the speed of copper wire. It is suggested that this particular kludge is possibly responsible for the development of memory as this leaves a physical footprint on the brain which can be recalled. So it is the sheer parallel numbers of bits that make the brain work, not the beautiful design of its parts. A hundred billion of these ancient suboptimal processes, massively interconnected by 500 trillion synapses, which are the gaps between these processes, and they simultaneously process information over these slow leaky connectors and produce enormous processing power. This all interconnects with the ancient emotional lower areas of the brain and along with memory and learning, this evolutionary clutch allows us to develop a sense of self and ultimately the most elusive of all things, consciousness.